Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all my blessed beloveds out there in living and thriving land. It's living and thriving time, and I am back to back for most of this week doing um, lots of taping, lots of interviews, and I'm thrilled actually to meet all of these people all over the world, talk about what they're doing to stay positive, and some of these relationships are, I know are going to be lifelong, so I'm really feeling awesome about this experience. I don't really dig the video because I have a couple of chins, and a, you know, but it is what it is. Um, some of the lessons or some of the takeaways I've gotten from the show is, you know, write a mission statement. Write a mission statement about who you are and incorporate that into your daily routine, whether it's right before you go to bed or right when you wake up in the morning. And, you know, you are your own business. Um, so it's kind of nice to have a routine, which is number two. Um, but number one is to write your mission statement and have this in, incorporated in your routine because vacation time is over. I've even canceled my Netflix. Big girl. Um, social media dieting is number three. Number two was routine. Vacation time's over. We've already talked about this, you know, kind of get back into the groove of a regular routine get up in the morning if you take a shower in the morning brush your teeth you know get dressed as though you were going to be presentable and not in your marvel comic pjs i know you i've seen you guys out there at walmart and other box stores gotten lazy self-care it's very important um Look at the things that you can use in your home to be creative. Creativity is a great thing to incorporate into your life. Um, my big thing that I do in the morning, part of my routine is before I even make my coffee, I have my blessings and my gratitude. Um, I really count that time as a priority for myself to give gratitude and blessings to what I have. Um, my big thing is I'm grateful for what was, what will be, and um, what is. And that is very open-ended specifically because that's just the way I feel. What's done is done. We're all good. What will be, will be. We're all good. And what is, is. We're good. Um, and let's see, what was the other one? Ooh, finding your passion. I have my little list here. Finding your passion. What are you passionate about? What sets your soul on fire? What do you absolutely, 100% without a doubt, get excited about? Because this is a great time to learn about your passion and to work towards it. And I'm actually presenting a free course for you guys. It's a little mini course to start delving into your passions. What is it that you want to do? Who do you want to be when you grow up? Do you even want to grow up? Do you need to grow up? I don't think so. I still have my Nerf gun on the other side of the bed. I know you can see it from here if you really zoom in. Um, and, uh, you know, finding that passion, getting, getting motivated on being a dreamer. You can dream. That's wonderful. But what do you do to put it into effect? So that course will be ready by the end of the week. I'm really excited about that. Um, my bigger news is that as you all know, and if you're new to the show, you may not know, I was a semi-finalist on Funky Thinkers. I had a fantastic, fantastic time with Jonathan and all the guests that we played with. Um, and I get to meet some really amazing people around the world. Uh, again, my favorite thing to do. That's what my passion is. And uh, he has an online board game. And I have permission to put it on my website so that you can play. So you can play anywhere in the world with anybody you want. Just go to the link, click on registered, blah, blah, blah. Um, and he came up with a writer's edition for me. I feel spoiled. So that should be released uh, here soon. Um, but just, you know, go to my website, go to resources. I think it's valuable resources and you'll see some really amazing things that you can do during this time. I'm really super excited about our guest today, Julie Ward. Um, she has an infectious smile. I love that. She's just an all around pretty cool gal and I'm looking forward to pulling her on. 
So I am so excited about having Julie Ward on. She has like this crazy infectious smile. Like she smiles as though somebody set her bottom on fire. She's like, <laughs> hey girl, hey. Well, How are you? you are just an infectious person. So I've been sitting here like, you gonna dial in, is she gonna dial in, is she gonna dial in? Come on. Yes. I want somebody to play with. <laughs> I was in the wrong place. You know, sometimes technology does its thing. It's just my double chin that does the thing for me because I'm constantly, you know, I think the next video I'm going to do, I'm going to do upside down. So maybe, I don't know. With gravity, right? Oh, I love you, Rusty. <laughs> it's good to see you. It's good to finally meet you. Um, people have nothing but admiration for you and the joy that you give. And what a perfect time to have you on. I have hosted this radio show for five years and it's always been audio because I'm not video friendly, I guess. I don't know. It makes me nervous. Oh, you're gorgeous. Uh, you, but whatever. I just, it's not my thing. But when the pandemic hit, I really felt caught in this place spiritually where I knew that a lot of people were, would be afraid to go out. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have resources. Like I don't have a lot of resource, like family or whatever. Um, so some of these people are kind of lonely. And so I was like, well, we could do little YouTube videos and that would be cute and sweet. And they can see my crooked teeth that I'm always bitching about on my radio show. Um, and what has transpired is letters of people just giggling. Like they just, they love the, the vibration and the energy of the silliness and some seriousness, but not much. We don't do too much of that. Yeah. And some of the takeaways have been really, really amazing. Um, so I'm thrilled to have you on. Who are you? What do you do? Do you like that transition? And what was the last one? What did you say? What makes you you? What makes me me? Wow. Okay. That's that's a lot. Let me unpack that quickly. <laughs> um, so my name's Julie Ward. Um, I am a plant-based nutritionist herbalist. I'm an all-around earth girl. People that knew me in college knew that I was very earthy even before I knew I was. You know, it's just one of those kind of things that you exude and people know who you are based on your essence. Um, so nutrition, I help people uh, transition to a plant-based diet who want to or and or want to just add more vegetables in their life but don't know how to, especially now with the time we're in now, more people are cooking, more people don't know what to do. You know, a lot of people ate out. It was really surprising, um, minus the, the toilet paper um, uh, scare and not having enough of that. The shelves in the grocery store were totally empty, which let me know that we did not cook at home. We ate out a ton. My daughter and I, I have to tell you, my daughter and I had a blast the first week because they they were hoarding like all of the bad things all yeah. of the bad things were celiac <laughs> and she you know she's on keto so i'm like dude we've got vegetable for days yes and you know it's just very bizarre i'm like why would you hoard all of the stuff that's going to kill you quicker than the virus but we're such a snack eating society you know um, and not the healthy snacks just the hand-to-mouth thing all the time um, and so that's who I am and, I, and so what makes me me um, I think the combination of the herbs the combination of really kind of getting back to earth and nature and really I love nature and, and as, as I sit here there's a couple of hawks that are flying around right outside my window so I'm distracted and I love them but I mean it's all about one thing that I, I believe is I do I do not believe your food should kill you, and we we're we've gone into a space where food is killing people based on what they're eating, and it's not necessary. And I think just a couple tweaks in diets, couple changes, can uh, get rid of all of those basic chronic illnesses. It can also it can also make you happier. You know there are a lot of people like me who suffered from mild depression most of their lives. But making a diet switch has totally helped and changed that. Um, and that's, that's a lot of that is my journey, you know. Um, so I'm here to help, here to serve, here to have a good time. And food should be tasty and fun. Yay! It should be tasty and fun. And, you know, one of the things when I uh, first started coaching many moons ago, not too many, 
but many enough. Okay. Um, I, I started coaching as a celiac because that's what I am. Okay. And I identified with the lack of information at that time in regards to celiac disease and the confusion and, yeah. and the fear surrounded by the lack of convenience. Yes. And I've cooked my whole life. I've been in the restaurant business for a really long time. And so for me, it's like a dance. It's like, for me, cooking is an art form. It's something that I do to fill my family with good eats, happiness. They're yeah. nourished. They have vitamin, And I've always been that way. Yeah. Um, but one of the first lessons that I taught my students when they were transforming and reprogramming themselves was to pull out all the spices in your spice rack. Take your finger and try each and every single spice. Oh my God, yes. I used to teach people when I was working with clients one on one. That was the first thing we did. I laid out all the spices in all their forms. Yeah, dried ginger, fresh ginger, powdered ginger, turmeric, powdered ginger, and had people taste the difference between the fresh and the dry. I mean, it was a total experience. And then the same with the herbs and making a tea out of that. And it was a long process. We were like, oh my God. I didn't know this is what turmeric looked like. I didn't know this is what ginger looked like. I mean, our disconnect to food is huge. It's gargantuan. And they always, they, you know, there are people in the world that are like, oh, you and your alternative medicine. And I'm like, well, it's actually the original medicine. Yeah, you know, this is original. This is what my ancestors for thousands of years have lived off of, raised families off of, and healed from. Yeah. various elements because they were really well well versed in which is actually original medicine right it's it's quite funny how we've programmed ourselves out of knowing what our ancestors knew and larger than that the illnesses and the sadness that we've incorporated in our life because we don't take the time to learn these things and now we're in a pandemic and everybody's like oh i'm bored what am i gonna do yeah you know yeah. learn about yeah. herbs <laughs> you think <laughs> all yeah. day long all day long love yeah. them yeah and, and i think a lot of people even during this time but i also think there's going to be a shift because i think some people are getting happier i think some people are like wow that job that was killing me i'm still doing it from home. I don't have the two hour commute. Well, four hours, right? Two hours in the morning, two hours in a, I mean, some people are living like that. And I, and I think a lot of people are going to shift and realize, oh, I don't have to live like that. Um, I can be happier. I think that state of chronic fatigue, chronic illness, um, that mild state of, wow, I'm just not happy, but this is the way it's supposed to be. I think a lot of that's going to go away. Um, that's my hope. I hope we get happier. Well, and, and I'm, I'm reading right there with you, girl, I'm there. But larger than that, yeah. so imagine this. This is like crazy Twilight Zone world. This right. is my fantasy. Okay. We have actually had to stretch technology further than you, you and I have ever seen. I mean, we're the last generation of actually having to hold the phone against the wall. I know, we are. Oh, yeah. Wow. Now we have mute buttons and we can say whatever to the, whatever Alexa or whatever those things are. I don't, I don't go that far. No. There's no limits to my promise. But um, so now we're stretching technology to a huge level. And now these really deep, 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 I mean, we're talking some spiritual deep stuff is coming out, right? For yeah. people. And I think that we're going to see a lot more, a, a lot more people working from home as I think they should yes. for pollution and energy and, and many, 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 many reasons that you and I both have known for years. Yes. Um, but larger than that, I think there's going to be a slew of individuals who are really going to take on and own their own book of business. Oh yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, totally. And so I think it's exciting to see this transformation because I know it's ugly right now. And I know for some, it feels very dark, but for me, I'm wicked excited. Like I'm excited. I am so excited too. Yeah. The energy is great. I feel great, you know, and, um, I did get sick during this process uh -huh. with pneumonia. 
Okay. Oh, wow. So. But I still got up and I still did what I'd love to do, which is this. Yeah. And I still write and, and do my courses and blah, blah, blah. But I'm doing it safely. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that's going to be an eye opener in that transition. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. I mean, not just for what's coming through me, but also what a lot of the people I've spoken with or talked to are, I mean, every, you know, I don't know where a lot of people are, but just some of the people that I've spoken to who do kind of get it. They're like, you know, I'm recreating me. Everybody's like, this is downtime. Let's clean it out you know, revamp, regroup, um, create new information, new art, new writings, new business. And, and it's really, I'm like, I'm stoked. Uh, even on my spiritual side, you know, um, which I don't actually talk about a lot because it's been a new thing probably in the last couple of years. And I'm just going to say the last couple of years of me actively pursuing shamanic studies so as a kid, I've always been really into my dreams. I've always said, when I look back at my childhood, amongst other things, that dream time was my original language. You know, messages and things would come through that way. So, but in this time and having more time to, to just spend doing that and meditation and really expanding my own spiritual awareness, I'm really excited. You know, excited of what's coming through me, excited of the things that I see, excited of talking to other people. Um, a lot of people do get it, you know, a lot of people really get it. And a lot of people are still nervous. And there are a lot of people that are going through a lot of folks because they're having to spend time with people they do not normally spend a lot of time with. So there are things that are coming up and people have to look at their relationships. Um, but yeah. Um, I, think it's, I think it's a really powerful time. Um, for a lot of people, I know a lot of people that I've spoken with, for whatever this reprogramming downtime has been. So for you and I, we're like, yes, we get to center, we get to focus, we get to regroup, we get to, you know, peel and layer and, and do what we do. Yeah. Um, but for other people, oh, I just got goosebumps. For other people, it is a time in which old memories and old things are brought forward because it's so quiet. Yeah. And for you and I doing the work all the time, yeah. you know, that quietness, we welcome. We welcome the hawks. We welcome the, the monarch butterfly that's the size of my house that's right out there, you know. Yeah. We welcome those distractions because those have meaning. Right. And some people aren't programmed or have even understood or looked for yeah. that. So it's been very scary for some people and they don't realize that they're actually grieving from past trauma. Well, that's the deal. It's the grief. It's the grief. It's the, it's the grief that's, that's huge. Um, and, and I think what's going to happen, a lot of the spiritual quote teachers, a lot of people are putting a lot of spiritual aspects to their work. So I think we're actually going into the dawning of the spiritual age. I mean, I think that's going to come through much, much more now. Um, because you're right, people, we get caught up in that cog, with cogs in the wheel, or whatever it is we're doing. And you're like, okay, I could do this. And you don't think about, it. people compartmentalize, right? Without dealing with a lot of those past traumas. And in my work with food, food has memory, you know, um, good memories, some bad memories. There's also a very large spiritual and vibrational aspect to food. So if you are changing your diet and eating a higher vibration, there will be more energy. There will be another lighter level. And we don't talk about that. We don't talk about those things um, often. And that to me is, and, I, and for me, it came, and I think I ate a salad, you know, a huge, wonderful salad with all the greens and like watercress and all the things that I was a long time ago, just studying sprouts, all the things that had a ton of nutrients in them. And I ate it because I was really tired. I was like, let me just eat a salad and then I'll do some work. I got up from the table with more energy than I had like earlier in that day. I was like, and it dawned on me. I was like, ding, 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 ding. This is what food's supposed to do. It's supposed to give you the energy to get through to the next meal, to get through the day to the next moment when you meet again. You're not supposed to go to sleep after you eat a meal. And we do that all the time. Well, we're also putting stuff in our bodies that, 
you know, make us fall asleep. They're, they're, they're making us a little fatter and lazier and a little bit more compliant and less yeah. hardworking. Yes. yes. Hard work for some people. Yes. Um, the brain fog sits in and you fall up, you know. But and then back to the spices, anything that you put on your plate, you can make taste amazing with some spices, except Brussels sprouts, we still don't agree. I don't agree with you either. I'm okay with, I don't like Brussels sprouts, never have. I don't like Brussels sprouts, I never have. I'll never see me eat those, no. I've tried it in so many ways. <laughs> Larger than that, you know, and for those of us with autoimmune issues, I have issues absorbing vitamins. So I have to do a lot of sublinguals. Um, and I have to work really hard at figuring out what foods are the best foods to revitamize myself. Right. But instead of people going in that step like our ancestors used to, they'll go to the supplement step and buy this milkshake whizzy gizzy thing from, you know, whatever diety place that they can find thinking that this is going to replace what they can replace naturally right right my one of the things I do in my classes no matter what class I'm teaching no matter what level everybody understands the benefits of a true green smoothie so and that smoothie you know you go to go some places oh I've got a green smoothie well it's also got a ton of fruit in it right mm -hmm. so it's like a fruit smoothie with a hand with a handful of spinach so one of the things that no matter again who I work with or whatever, they always tell me, you know, I'm still doing the green smoothie and it's straight greens. And some people are like, oh, I can't, you know, because it's a, it is a taste bud thing, right? Or because there's nothing sweet in it, except maybe a Granny Smith apple, but it's got your moon boosting teas in it. It's got dandelion in it. It's got your greens in it. It's got uh, watercress in it. It's got collard greens. I mean, you've got to put it in a really kind of heavy duty blender just to blend it all up. Um, and those of my real hardcore, you know, I teach people how to incorporate seaweed, Irish moss, which has a ton of minerals that our body needs and actually helps our digestive system. So we put that in there. So you got, see, I mean, it's a nutrient mineral dense smoothie. Yeah, it takes a minute to get used to, but you top it off again, spices, cinnamon, cardamom, um, you know, that goes in there. And people have made it their own. And that's the thing, instead of coffee in the morning, my coffee drinkers are like, oh, wow, I don't need coffee. Uh, you don't need coffee. If you choose to drink a cup of coffee, that's on you. Because we all, you know, people like, I like the taste of coffee. I can't drink it. it. Messes up my nervous system. Coffee, coconut ice cream might be a different story. But, you know, I, my brain is turned on when I drink it. I'm ready for the day. Brain fog gone. Um, and it's just an energizing thing. And, and so, um, yeah, it's, it's about the nutrients, you know, and we don't know that. And it's like, that's the one thing I teach no matter what. It's like, hey, this is salad in a bottle. You can't eat a salad. You don't want to eat a salad. Put it in a blender. Drink it. Go your, get on with your day. Well, imagine the thousands and thousands and thousands of years that we have, you know, crawled, walked, plummeted, hunted, gathered, enslaved, incorporated, all of these amazing things that we've done as a species. Right. And all of a sudden, we have waffles. All of a sudden, we have pancakes. All of a sudden, cinnamon rolls. And girl, I, you know, there's two things I miss as a celiac, cinnamon rolls and croissants. You know, anybody out there wants to send me a gluten-free cinnamon roll or gluten-free croissant? Not the same. I'm good. But I know they're not the same. You don't have to poke the bear. Yeah, not the same. Okay. Is that why you didn't do it? Because you're like, they're not, they're not going to be the same. <laughs> they're good. not. They're not. And that's reality. But... Yeah. That's my reality. Yeah. But, you know, for thousands of years, we were seasonally and geographically yes. eaters. Yes. And I really love the fact that we can transport food from all over the world. There's things from Europe that I still get that I love. I love Turkish coffee. Yeah. Very different than yes. what we yes. have here normally. Um, but we don't eat in season in rhythm no that either we don't we don't we don't we eat all the time we we constantly and we eat whatever's available we don't it's an uh, food our relationship with food has become unconscious and unintentional and it's and i teach people to be intentional with their food because anything you buy in a box has a ton of sugar in it and i'm not against sugar and i'm not against fat and i'm not against that but it's 
eat it when you want it, not because you think something is healthy that has, that, that has those things in it and you think you're not getting them. Read the ingredients. You want sugar? Put sugar in your food. You want fat? Put fat in your food. You want, um, you know, so those are like, so a whole food plant-based diet is eating the whole food, right? And, and you know this, so it's in, instead of oil, like we don't cook with oil. If you want fat, you eat an avocado, you eat the, the olives, you, you know, you eat the coconut. Um, and then when I start working with people, I say, hey, okay, think about it. When you're cooking and you put oil in everything, you put two, three tablespoons of oil in that skillet right? And you do that every time you cook with every dish you cook, how much fat are you getting? How much extra fat are you getting? Whereas if you say you want olive oil on your salad, you put a little tablespoon of olive oil in it and that's that fat plus the avocado plus the da 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 da. You eat, you know, like I said, I, I have a, I'm still a coconut ice cream, dairy free ice cream fan. So that's my, I still love it. I'm, I'm, I'm there with you. I love that. I, so we, I, have, I, I, we have a, uh, a homemade ice cream place down the road here. <gasps> they do all homemade ice cream. Yeah. And Kahlua coconut flavored ice cream. Oh, that's wow. That's great. Oh. That's great. I just found Van Leeuwen in the grocery store. So there's a Van Leeuwen ice cream place here, but now they're putting it in the grocery store like in Sprouts. They have a mocha fudge, and it's oat milk based ice cream. Ooh, yum! Oh, coconut butter, and it's got coconut oil in it. But okay, so that, that's my. I love it, and I can't bring it in the house because I'll eat the whole thing, and it's a pint. But you know, um, but okay, so I know that I'm eating that, right? I'm aware that my sugar is coming from that. My oil is in there. As opposed to eating something every day and going, and then finally looking, oh, that had a, that had 14 teaspoons of sugar in it, or that had, you know, another nine grams of sugar, and that had another whatever, whatever. So it's just it's it's about being intentional with our food. At some point, we let people tell us how to eat. You know, the fast food revolution came about because it was easy to pick up something to eat. And I, as, as history serves me right, it was kind of right after the war and women were working and, yep. you know, it was, it was about um, people needed to eat quickly because now everybody was working and doing something and nobody was at home and feeding the kids. And so that, that monster just became a behemoth, right? And it wasn't about nutrients, it was about convenience. And that was the beginning of the disconnect, the industrial revolution. I wonder if it was not only the industrial re revolution, as you say, but I think if we traced it back a little further, okay. food was kind of a sign of wealth. So there was a time period, a very long, 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 long time period mm -hmm. that you'd only have bread products on Sunday because A, it was hard to source and B, it was expensive. And you didn't have sugar at all. There was no sugar back then. I mean, the, the wealthy had sugar, the wealthy had the bread, the wealthy and the wealthy were larger than everyone else too. Well, and that was a sign of, um, you know, to be larger and to have a triple chin and all of that stuff, that was a sign of decadence and wealth. Yes. Whereas now, you know, we have, we, we have so many body issues. That's a completely different show. Yeah, it is. It but is. when it comes to food, that unhealthy relationship from being gluttonous has become being naive or we have, we have the resources. So it's, know, a it's interesting. Yeah. It, the, the, the flip. Yeah. It's a flip. It's interesting because now the wealthy aren't necessarily overweight. They're they're The wealthy are in shape, right? They've got a trainer. They've got a cook. They've got a chef. They're not eating those things anymore. Um, it's, it's interesting how it has flipped. Uh, and, and with, I feel like it's my job to help people out realize that, you know, it's, hey, let's just, if you're not sure what to do, call me. If you're not sure, you need some information. You know, I, I think the other thing is there's also so much information out there. People get stuck into overwhelm, you know, well, what do I do? And if at the end of the day, you don't call anybody, you don't get any help, eat more vegetables, eat less processed food, shop on the outside of the grocery store. 
you know, there are video, there are websites out there that are available to get recipes on food, you know, um, it's, and truly the 99 cent store has great vegetables and oftentimes organic. So people, you know, people say it's expensive. It's not expensive to eat vegetables. Um, where can we find you and how do we find out more about, you know, eating better, eating healthier, being smarter about what we put in our mouth? I mean, chocolate ice cream, Kahlua ice cream, ice. it's going to go in. It's going <laughs> in. I'm with you on that. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. I go there, get a little tiny cup, like a baby cup, goes in, and I walk away. That's it. That's you know, the safest it. relationship I can have with that. Yeah, that's it. And, that, and that's reality. And I tell people the other part of it is guilt. Oh, my God, I fell off the diet because I ate this. It's not about that. It's about, okay, so you ate that. Enjoy every minute of that thing. And then just go back to doing what you know what to do. You know, just get back on track. And because you're human, you're going to eat something extra, okay? Um, so I, my business is Fresh Food Alchemy. You know, it's about the food, the herbs, a little bit of the spirituality um, and the science behind making things healthy, making things that are healthy, tasty. And so I'm on IG, I'm on Facebook. Uh, I've got a course coming up probably in the next three weeks or so. It's called Mastering Your, Mastering Your Health, The Art of Healing. And um, Facebook and IG, you'll find information there. What state are you in? I don't remember. I'm in California. Ooh, awesome. California, yay. Yes, California. So if you want, I can post your course when it's ready on my website. Perfect. I'm doing to help people because I don't think California has released or reduced any of the lockdown stuff for a while. No. So you got to do what you got to do to pay those bills, yo. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, and what is, what was the largest reason that you chose this path? What inspired you to think about food? Because I'm sure that's not what you went to college for. You went to college for something else, right? Totally. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sort of. Totally. You know, my life, I've had like three lifetimes, right? We've all done something different. And so I had a fabric and jewelry business for a long time. Um, and again, my journey was how do I feel better right out of college, before college, because I could not digest meat and food. And that was long before we understood enzymes, we understood how antibacteria, um, antibiotics messed up our digestive system. But I know that if I ate meat, I didn't poop for three, four days. Right. Um, and I loved, my mother made these beautiful, you know, sweet sour pork chops. I used to be, mom, can I have that for my birthday dinner, right? And there were all these things, but as I got older, they just made me feel bad. And so I began my journey to feel better. Um, and when I, when 2008 hit, the other crisis we've lived through, the financial crisis, uh, my fabric business, good 75, 80% of my clients went out of business. And because I'd been on this journey, when I would cook for my friends, I had a friend when she's like, you're in the wrong business. I was like, excuse me? She's like, no, you need to be in the health and food the food business, helping people heal, showing people how to eat this healthy kind of thing. So when that happened, I was like, hmm, let me think about that. And that was kind of the beginning of the transition here. That's it. So what I love and I find fascinating is we all go through life kind of like this. And then we get smacked a couple of times, like the cosmic two by four. I'm the only redhead in the family. I got hit a lot. Ooh. Right. Right. God just likes to funk me a good one because I don't. Like that. I still don't. Okay. I I know. Don't hit me today. Right. <laughs> but you know, it takes trial and 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 trial before we get it in our head that we have to re reprogram ourselves. And what I love about you not only is your smile infectious and your personality delightful, is the fact that you were able to turn yourself around to a point where that journey was hard. Yeah, it's not easy. I mean, I, when I was a kid, I used to like steak, but I don't digest. I can't digest it. It's exactly. so, so I don't eat it and I haven't eaten it in a bazillion years. Do I like the smell of it? Absolutely. Can I cook it? Absolutely not. My right. daughter's, I can't cook steak for, for right. life. but you know, you take that 
situation, you take that journey and you turn it around and you turn it into something powerful to enable other people to hear the story and to utilize the tools and even understand the mistakes you make so that you don't have to make them. And exactly. Isn't that what we're here for? Yes, it's totally what we're here for. I love you. And when I come to California, I'm going to give you a big old hug because by, by the time I get out there, we could probably hug again. I know, right? Totally, totally. All right, yeah. sister, do not uh, forget to send me that information. I will be more than honored to put it up. Give us your website one more time, and I got to roll to the next person. Me too. Fresh Food Alchemy, A-L-C-H-E-M-Y. It's also my IG, Fresh Food Alchemy. It's also my Facebook page. Come join me. Come see me. Love to interact with you guys. Bye. Bye, love bug. You're watching Living and Thriving with Rusty, and that was the fabulous and contagious Julie Ward. You're going to have to go and check her out. Her links will be here, there, wherever I decide to put it, because I'll do whatever I want. It's my show. Takeaways. What you put in your mouth sticks on your body. Remember that. Spice is your friend. It doesn't matter if it's tofu, tofini, whatever that stuff, beanie stuff is. It is your friend, and you can actually make it taste good. Trust me, I do it all the time. Other takeaway, find your passion. What gets your soul on fire? What gets you excited? Why do you want to get out of bed in the morning other than that smelling of that coffee or maybe trying one of those green drinks she was talking about? Who knows? Try it. Creativity, that's what this is all about. Recreation, create yourself. Find things in your house, in your space that you can be doing that's fun and playful and exciting. Like I always say, roll up those windows, strip off your clothes and throw on some ACDC. Neighbors aren't watching anyway. They're watching the TV. Have fun in life because that's what it's here for. And if anything, this pandemic has really, really assured me of, I'm doing what I love to do. And I hope you do too. Until next time, know that you're beautiful, know that you're loved, and I'll see you on the other side.